Section 16, Multiple Correlation, Making Sense of Statistics, A Conceptual Overview, 6th Edition. PowerPoints and VoiceOver by Dr. Pamela Pittman-Brown, CPG. In this section, the correlation between the combination of two variables and a third variable is explored. In sections 12, 13, 14, and 15, the correlation between only two variables was considered. So to understand the topic of multiple correlation, consider the three sets of scores in example 1 on page 82 of your textbook. So you see the scores on a basic math test, which were taken before students enrolled in an algebra class. And the algebra grades are the same scores as in example thir 3 on page 74 and 75 in section 15. The only difference is that they have been rearranged according to the algebra grade with the highest grade of a 4.0 or an A at the top. So as you know from figure 15.3 on page 75 in section 15, uh, R, the Pearson R, is 0.64 for the relationship between the basic math score and the subsequent algebra grades, which indicates that the basic math scores are a moderately good predictor of the subsequent algebra grades. So when you see this um, scatter gram, what you see is the Pearson R is equal to a 0.64, where your R squared is a 0.41, which gives you uh, the 41% explained variance. So in everyday terms, what this means is that 59% of the differences in algebra grades remains unpredicted by the basic math test. So 59% of the differences in algebra grades remains unpredicted by the basic math test, which means that 41% gives you an explained variance, which means you can predict 41% of the differences in algebra grades by the basic math test. Because so much of the variance in the algebra grade is not predicted by the basic math test, what you would really want to do is add an additional predictor variable to determine if the degree of prediction could be improved by using two predictors instead of only using the one predictor of the basic math scores. So basically, um, the scores on an attitude toward math scale uh, were added. So we added the attitude toward math scale, uh, which you saw on uh, the two, uh, two slides ago. Um, and these, these attitude toward math scale uh, was measured before the enrollment in the algebra class. So the attitude was measured before enrolling in the algebra class. The attitude scale had 15 items, and the possible scores range from a zero which basically means that you uh, have a low attitude toward math, you despise it, you hate it, you loathe it possibly, to a 20, which would be the highest, which means you have a pretty good attitude toward math. Maybe you feel comfortable doing it. So now that we are looking at uh, example one, which you saw a couple of slides back, we can actually look at Jude's grade, uh, his algebra grade, which was a 4.0, his attitude toward math score, um, which is the highest attitude toward math score. And these suggest 
that there is a direct correlation between attitude toward math and algebra grade. Now, if we look at Joey, um, this is is a huge contrast to Jude. So Joey has the lowest algebra grade. Uh, he has a 1.5, and he also has the lowest attitude toward math score of a 3. So when high scores on one variable are associated with high scores on the other variable, um, also, and remember, that when low scores on one variable are associated with low scores on the other, we know that the relationship is positive or direct. So also, this suggests a direct correlation. Now, if we look at all of the grades, and all of the attitude toward math scores in example one, we also see that the relationship is not perfect. So we may not have a direct or positive relationship. So for example, if we look at Justin, Justin has a high attitude toward math score, but he also has a 2.0 in his algebra, um, which is about a C. And also, if we look at Michelle, she has a relatively high attitude toward math of a 12 also, but a grade of only a 1.5 in algebra. So now, with these exceptions, what we need to do then is to calculate our Pearson R for the data so that we can get a, a very concise description of the degree of correlation. So when we calculate the Pearson R, um, the Pearson R for this relationship is a 0.68, which basically suggests that attitude toward math is a good predictor of success in algebra. Now, here are some of the things that we know. Um, what we know uh, based on the ability to predict algebra grades on the data in example one is that for the relationship between basic math scores and algebra grades, we have a Pearson R equal to 0.64. And for the relationship between attitude toward math scores and algebra grades, we have a Pearson R equal to 0.68. So given these relationships, it does seem likely that we, if we use a combination of the attitude toward math scores and the basic math scores to predict the algebra grade, we might can improve our ability to predict the algebra grades over just using one of the predictors. So it might improve the predictability of the algebra grades. So now we're going to use two predictors. So we're going to use the basic math scores and the attitude toward math scores to predict the algebra grades. So to determine the degree of the relationship between these two predictors, we'll be using a multiple correlation coefficient. Um, and the symbol for the multiple correlation coefficient is an uppercase italicized R. The calculations of a multiple correlation coefficient are actually beyond the scope of this book, but it does turn out that for the data in example one, your multiple correlation coefficient is equal to point. 7, 1, which is higher than your basic math score, Pearson R, or your attitude toward math, Pearson R. Now, multiple correlation coefficients has some of the ba same basic characteristics as your Pearson R. So specifically, uh, we can say that the closer the value of R is to zero, the weaker the relationship. And for an inverse relationship, the closer 
uh, R is to negative 1, the stronger the relationship. And for a direct relationship, the closer R is to 1, uh, the stronger the relationship. So we can say that uh, R equaling 0.77 represents a relatively strong direct relationship because it's fairly close to a 1.00 or a perfect direct relationship. So knowing from section 14 the coefficient of determination for a value of the Pearson R, you know, you can actually calculate uh, the coefficient by squaring R. So multiplying the square of the Pearson R by 100% gives the percentage of variance on one variable accounted for by the other variable. Well, this holds true also for your multiple correlation coefficient. So for the value of R, which is equal to 0.77 for the data in example 1, we have R squared is equal to 0.77 times 0.77, which is equal to 0.59. And multiplying a 0.59 times 100% indicates that 59% of the variance in algebra grades is accounted for by the combination of basic math test scores and attitude toward math scores. So here is a summary of what we now know about example 1. We know that the best single predictor of algebra grades is attitude toward math scores. And you see that the Pearson R is equal to 0.68 and your R squared is 0.46 which has a 46% variance accounted for. And the next best single predictor of algebra grades is basic math test scores where we have a Pearson R equal to 0.64 with an R squared of 0.41 for 41% variance accounted for. But if we use both attitude toward math scores and basic math test scores in combination, the degree of prediction is greater than that for either of the two individual predictors. Either the individual predictor of attitude toward math scores or the basic uh, math scores. So we have a multiple correlation coefficient of 0.77 with an R squared equal to 0.59 for a 40 for a 59% variance accounted for. So then for predicting algebra grades, it would be better to use a combination of attitude toward math scores and the basic math test. Let's also note that multiple correlation coefficients can be calculated for a combination of more than two predictors. So we can use more than two predictors. For instance, it's common to determine the validity of college admission procedures by calculating the value of your multiple correlation coefficient for a combination of at least three predictors. So we have three predictors such as the verbal college admissions test scores, the quantitative college admissions test scores and high school grades using freshman grades in college as the variable being predicted.